the various pieces of the Atlassian solution, such as Jira software and Confluence and HitChat and Bitbucket and Bamboo and the Jira service desk, all combine to make up a full end-to-end -end solution to support the application lifecycle. Now, we'll be focused on the Jira service desk piece of that solution today, but I'll also mention other integrated pieces of the solution, such as HipChat and Confluence as we go. So teams of all shapes and sizes have transformed the way they deliver IT using um, the Jira service desk to give their customers the best service experience. In fact, uh, just since its launch three years ago, more than 15,000 teams are using Jira service desk. These are uh, small to medium-sized teams up to much larger enterprise teams because everybody knows how incredibly easy it is to set up and use Jira Service Desk. In fact, independent reviewers have rated Jira Service Desk not only easiest to use, but shortest time to set up and easiest to maintain among other similar solutions. So the Jira Service Desk is, purpose, is purpose-built for IT and service teams and provide your teams with everything they need right out of the box, including incident, change, and problem management, and service requests. It lets you give your customers a way to ask for help while your agents resolve incidents faster than ever. Jira Service Desk is able to scale to meet the growing needs of IT service management, enabling IT teams to deliver world-class service. So what about ITIL? Can Jira Service Desk support the ITIL needs of my organization? You bet it can. As many of you know, ITIL is the gold standard for IT teams around the world. It's an integrated set of best practice processes for delivering IT services to customers. ITIL's primary objective is maximizing value to the business by aligning IT resources with business needs. Many Atlassian customers are adopting the Jira service desk to address their organization's ITIL, ITIL needs. And it's super flexible because it leverages the power of Jira. So it offers the, an excellent starting point for where your IT teams can adopt best practices right out of the box. And Atlassian knows that you know, ITIL is important to customers, so they were very happy recently to announce that Jira Service Desk is now ITIL certified. They achieved ITIL certification from both Pink Verify and Axelos for the ITIL processes of request fulfillment, incident management, problem management, and change management. Now, to attain ITIL certification, a software vendor must satisfy 100% of the mandatory criteria for the process being verified. And Jira Service Desk was assessed against ITIL-compatible product features and terminologies and workflows and functional requirements and other criteria. So that ITIL certification is a reassurance that the product's capable of supporting your ITIL processes. And Jira Service Desk stands above other vendors in the ITSM market because of its adaptability that it provides for implementing and streamlining uh, support processes. So it truly offers a path to lean ITIL and ITSM. So let's take a, a quick moment to take a closer look at each of those processes to understand how Jira supports those uh, in ITIL. So we all know IT receives a wide variety of requests from customers. Now these requests can include simple requests for support or a new mobile device or software installation, that sort of thing. So it's really the size and frequency and low risk nature of these types of requests that mean they're really more appropriately handled by a separate process rather than with the incident or change management process. So ITIL defines the process to handle these types of requests as request fulfillment. Now Jira Service Desk provides a fast and efficient way to implement an ITIL-based service request catalog. And it provides ITIL best practice workflows that are needed to support requests that require approval and then another workflow for ones that don't. And the self-service customer portal makes it easy for us customers to request and help and track progress on issues. And then when you add the Atlassian collaboration solution I, I mentioned a moment ago called Confluence, Jira Service Desk makes it, even, uh, makes it super simple to uh, add search, searchable knowledge articles to your, to your request process to deliver even greater value to your customers. The Service Desk team provides first-line response for incidents since they provide a single point of contact for the customer communications to IT. Now, according to ITIL, the aim of incident management is to restore any disruption of service as quickly as possible. That includes monitoring any condition that has the potential to result in a reduced quality of service. And Jira Service Desk provides best practices 
uh, ITIL workflows and fields required for an IT team to streamline their response to major incidents. So when you combine the power of dynamic queues and collaboration and proactive SLAs, you have a service desk that empowers IT to resolve incidents quickly. So while incident management is all about finding the shortest path to restoring normal service, problem management, on the other hand, is about trying to find the underlying causes of incidents and the best resolution and prevention for future ones. The aim of problem management is to reduce the adverse effect of incidents that are caused by errors within the IT infrastructure, and then to prevent recurrence of those incidents related to those errors. Jira Service Desk provides a path for IT teams to implement problem management and make it a logical extension of their incident management process. Now, every IT organization faces the challenge of managing constantly changing IT infrastructure. So ITIL provides a set of best practices for change management that make it easier for IT teams to prioritize and manage changes efficiently while minimizing the impact and risk to the business. Change management is the process designed to understand and minimize these risks while making IT changes to critical systems and services. Jira Service Desk offers a streamlined path to ITIL change management, which provides a standardized approach for prioritizing and responding to requests for change while reducing the failed changes in service disruption and defects and rework. And Jira Service Desk uh, leverages collaboration, which makes it easier for IT teams to plan and review and implement those changes. IT teams can also leverage team calendars for confluence, again, the Atlassian collaboration solution I mentioned, to use as the ITIL forward schedule of changes in order to plan and coordinate the appropriate time to implement a change. Another great feature that the Service Desk offers is uh, it makes it easy for IT teams to link change requests with software releases to create complete visibility between teams. So I'm going to move now into our live demonstration of the Jira Service Desk Suite. And again, I'll mention, just feel free to enter any questions you have in the Q&A box, and we'll leave some time at the end to address those. So first, I'd like to set the stage for the, the roles here in the Jira Service Desk. There's basically two roles. There's an agent role and a customer role. Now, customers interact with the system through the customer portal, and that allows them to do three things. They're able to search knowledge to hopefully uh, resolve uh, their issues before they have to submit tickets against them. They're able to submit new issues, and then they're able to also uh, find existing issues and update them. Agents, on the other hand, uh, come at the system from the agent interface, and they're able to do uh, everything in the system. They're able to create tickets and work tickets and change the status of tickets and communicate with customers and, and all of those sorts of things. So today for our demo, I'm going to be logged in as myself, acting as an agent from the agent interface, and that's what we're looking at now. You can tell at the uh, top right-hand corner there's my little picture showing that I'm logged in. Now, I'll act as several different roles within the, uh, within the IT support staff today as incident management and service management and change management, that sort of thing. And I'll try to note when I move between those. We'll uh, show you in a few minutes the customer portal, but I want to take you around the interface here just a little bit first. Um, so when you first log in as an agent, you're brought to the system dashboard. Now, a dashboard is just a collection of gadgets, and, and gadgets are just visual representations of data from the system. So we have things like bar charts and the activity stream and pie charts and lists of uh, appropriate in, uh, issues and, and that sort of thing. And uh, one dashboard is defined as the default system dashboard that's displayed each time you log in. But you can also have as many public or, and or private dashboards as you'd like to meet your needs. So from the main dashboard, I would select the project as an agent, and I'm going to go here to our ITIL service desk project. Now, a project is really just a collection of issues in the system that are treated together in some way. So this is my ITIL service desk project that's going to contain changes and incidents, and service requests, and problems. 
We could have other projects in the system for software projects or for business projects under the JIRA core product, that sort of thing. But today we're focusing on the service desk, so we'll look at this service desk project. And when you come to the uh, agent interface for the, for the project, you do see a list of queues. Now these are my queues here in my demo system. Out of the box, some queues come that can be altered or even deleted, and you can create as many queues as you'd like. And, and a queue really is just basically a set of criteria put against the whole set of issues in a project so that you can narrow down to a set of issues that you're interested in for some reason. So for example, right now I'm showing uh, issues assigned to me. These are issues assigned to the service desk team. This is all the issues. These are the issues resolved in the last seven days. So you would create queues for whatever is important to you to get to your data as quickly and efficiently as possible. So I'm going to I'm going to toggle over now to the customer portal, and we'll we'll uh, look at the customer portal and submit some issues from there, and then we'll come back here and find those issues and work them as an agent. So I'm going to toggle over to another browser here where I'm logged in, as you can see up in the right uh, corner as my customer. And this is the customer portal. Now we have a way at the top of the customer portal for admins to post a uh, banner message with a, a, a subject and a, and a body. And here for our demo today, I've showed you a service notice because we're experiencing some voice outages across our offices. I'm able to uh, add a hyperlink here to uh, a ticket or to a PDF or some web page in our environment to provide more information, so that's very flexible. Underneath that, we've got some branding options here. I've included our Rightstar logo on our, on our customer portal as well as a, um, <laughs> a very thought-out name, the Demo Sandbox Portal. <laughs> Below that, uh, you have a place to enter some instructions uh, that an admin can configure for your customers. And in this case, I've just noted that you can raise a, a service desk issue from the options below. Now, in this box, I can search knowledge. So if I come as a customer and I'm interested in things like maybe some sort of network outage, I can type in uh, keywords here and find hits on that. So I get a couple hits on the word network, so I can look at those and check out the knowledge base articles that are related to the keywords that I've typed in. And then below the search area for the knowledge, we have uh, categories of requests and then the request types in those categories. Now these request types down the left side are all completely configurable. Uh, they are uh, really just tags on each of the uh, uh, request types in the system so that you can organize them in a way that's easy for your customers to find. So you'd want to do uh, create these request categories in a way that makes sense in your environment. And because these are uh, sort of tags on the request, a, a particular type of request can appear under multiple categories. For example, I see my report a system problem request type under common requests, but I also find the same uh, request type under applications. So that way you can put a request type anywhere in, in your structure that makes sense for your users to find it. So we're going to pretend I'm having a couple scenarios today here as my customer. First thing, we'll pretend that my customer is a manager and he needs to onboard a new employee. So I'm going to submit a request for an employee onboarding. So I would come down to, oh, I don't know, maybe log in an account and look for an onboard. And sure enough, I've got an onboard new hire request here. I'll go ahead and open that up. And the set of fields here that are provided for the customer to fill out are, are uh, defined uh, for each environment. So, you know, these will be things in your environment that make sense to you. I've added a few here that that, that uh, makes some sense for a demo perspective, but of course this would uh, be whatever uh, fields and data you'd want to capture from the uh, customer in, in your environment. So I'm going to say we're going to onboard Bill Smith here today. And he's an analyst, and we'll put him in Dallas with me where I am, and he'll be in the IT department. And we'll skip a couple of these optional fields I don't need to fill out right now. We'll say he's an employee, and we'll say he's starting next Monday, and we'll say he needs a cell phone, and he needs a laptop. 
and we'll add a couple of other pieces of software he's going to need there. And I'll click Create. 